Low tax revenues is a key challenge for many developing countries. How can these countries effectively raise tax revenues? Well, in our latest research paper, M. Hati Basri, Rima Hanna, Ben Okin and I compare two policy options, improving tax administration or increasing tax rates. Specifically, we analyze two reforms in Indonesia, one in corporate tax administration and one in corporate income tax rates, and we find that improving tax administration can have very large returns. The first reform that we study is called the MTO reform. In 2007, Indonesia assigned the several hundred largest taxpayers in each of its 19 regional tax offices into medium taxpayer offices. That's where the MTO name comes from. And we highlight two aspects about this reform. The first one is what the MTO offices were really about. Compared to the primary tax offices, which were the default tax offices at the time, at the time the MTO offices had the same IT structure, the same organizational structure that remained the same throughout the whole period, but the MTO tax offices had much higher staff to taxpayer ratios. Well, this leads to a much higher tax enforcement environment, you have more auditors, for example, and a much higher tax capacity environment. For example, you have more staff to answer questions. That's what the MTO was really about. And that's the first aspect of the reform that we highlight. The second aspect of the reform that we highlight is how the taxpayers were assigned into the MTO, how they were selected. While we no longer have the exact formula that was used or the spreadsheets that were used to assign the taxpayers, we do know the inputs that went into the formula. And that was gross income and total taxes paid for the tax year, for the baseline tax year prior to the assignment, which in this case was 2005, okay? So the first thing we can do to check is in fact, probability, the probability of treatment, the probability of being assigned into the MTO is increasing in both gross income and in total income, and in, in, in total taxes paid, okay? We can use this information to then estimate the effect of being assigned into the MTO using a weighted difference in differences strategy. That's an empirical strategy that's actually rather simple, okay? It just takes three things, three, three parts of it. The first one is who are the treated taxpayers? Those were the taxpayers assigned to the MTO. Who are the untreated taxpayers? Those were the taxpayers not assigned to the MTO. And the third one is the weights. And what do the weights do? Well, the weights are constructed such that on average for the base year with whose data was used to do the assignment, the treated and control units are on average the same. So the weights balance the sample such that treated and control are on average similar on the same level on the baseline year, the year whose data was used for assignment. And then we can use this balanced sample to then estimate a difference in differences strategy. We compare treated and control before and after treatment. Okay? We highlight three aspects about our findings. So three findings. The first one was that MTO increased both income reported, so gross income, taxable income, and total taxes paid. Corporate income tax, value added tax, for example. In total, we estimate that the MTO increased on average, total taxes paid by 525 million rupiah per taxpayer per year on average. That's large. If you want to benchmark this amount, it more than doubled the amount of taxes collected on these treated taxpayers prior to the reform. Okay, so it's large. That's the first aspect. It increased both gross income and total taxes paid by a large amount. The second aspect is this was a cost-effective reform. Okay. In total, if you sum this 525 million rupiah per taxpayer per year across all treated taxpayers across all year, this amounted to about $4 billion in extra revenue at the 2007 exchange rate generated by this reform. And at what cost? Well, we then use administrative data on the budgets used for each of the tax offices and find that it costs about, that the reform costs about 1.5% of its total revenue raise which is very little. It's a very it was a very cost-effective reform, okay? The third finding we highlight is that, well, you may expect that these effects on revenue or on gross income decreased over time. Perhaps taxpayer got used to the new level of enforcement, for example. But in fact, it increases over time. We find that this effect increases over time. So what could it be? Well, we'll propose an explanation that we corroborate in the data, in fact. The idea is that once you move a taxpayer to a high enforcement environment, the relationship between taxpayer size and enforcement flattens. And we do find that in the data. 
What's the idea? Once the taxpayer is already at a high enforcement environment, there are no disincentives for growth anymore. So the taxpayer might, may as well grow. It's not as if growing is going to make the taxpayer be under more scrutiny, for example, from the tax authorities. So, and we do find in the data that the relationship between tax enforcement variables as measured, for example, by tax audits or tax assessments and taxpayer size as measured, for example, by total number of employees, gross income or total taxes paid, that relationship is much flatter, is flattened by the MTO, okay? That's the MTO reform. Let's put that aside. The second reform we study was a complete restructuring that Indonesia did of its corporate income tax rate schedule. So the marginal tax rate, the marginal tax rate schedule faced by corporate income taxpayers, okay? In 2009, Indonesia did a complete restructuring of the schedule. The schedule used to be three tiers, okay, based on taxable income, and the top tax rate was 30%. 2009, Indonesia changes this. The tax, uh, marginal tax rate is no longer going to be a function of taxable income. It's a function of gross income now. So it's essentially a flat rate, but with discounts based on your gross income, okay? What this reform generated for us, researchers, is an incredible amount of variation in the change in corporate income tax, marginal corporate income tax rates that the taxpayers faced because of the reform. So some taxpayers experienced tax cuts, others tax increase, some large tax cuts, some small tax cuts. And so we use that incredible amount of variation to estimate the key parameter in any analysis of tax policy, which is the elasticity of taxable income. The elasticity of taxable income says with respect to the net of tax rate, which is what we analyze, it says, if I raise the percent of the income that you get to keep, by how much more, by how much more income do you report, okay? And we estimate our an ETI of 0 0.59, meaning that if you were to increase the net of tax rate by 1%, the taxpayer would report 0.59% more income. So it's not 1%, it's less than that, but 0.59%, okay? What does that ETI mean? In fact, it means something very interesting for Indonesia. At that ETI, we estimate that the LAFR rate for Indonesia, which is the marginal tax rate after which any increase in tax rates lowers revenue, okay? That LAFR rate for Indonesia is 56%. That means that currently, Indonesia's top marginal tax rate is 25%. Currently, Indonesia is well below its LAFR rate. It means that if you were wanted to continue to raise tax rates, it would continue to raise revenues, although there's distortions associated with it. Right, exactly, for example, okay? And so now that we have this ETI and we have the revenues from the MTO reform, we can ask a counterfactual question. We can ask, by how much would the government have had to raise its top marginal tax rate in 2006, which was 30%, by how much would the government have had to raise that rate in order to match the amount of revenues raised by the MTO reform? And we find that that number is eight percentage points. So the government would have had to raise the top marginal tax rate from 30% to 38% on the treated taxpayers in order to raise the same amount of revenue as was generated by the MTO reform. So that's a very large increase, okay? Overall, what does this suggest? It suggests that improving tax administration can be a very, can, there can be very large returns to improving tax administration in developing countries in a very cost-effective manner.